What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here. We're going a bit old school on the camera angle. I am in a hotel room in Austin on the road for a few days, but I wanted to talk about Microsoft's Kinect and Sony's PlayStation Move. It's sort of been all the buzz and all the talk about it at E3. Uh, the sort of very divergent motion controls uh, for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. So let me recap what both of these are, and if you haven't seen the full uh, E3 keynote recap video, I'll put them down below, which evidently is right in my pants. Uh, so you can check them out. But Microsoft's Kinect began its life as Project Natal. It essentially is a motion capture system. It uses a series of cameras and lenses to track your motion, which essentially translates into you being the controller. So we're talking complete controllerless gaming. Uh, when you see somebody do it, it looks very minority report-esque. You know, you're waving at the camera, moving things around. Um, it actually scans and recognizes your whole body. And from the videos that I've seen, it does it quite well and I can have up to four people that can come in and play. So what does this mean? Well, for right now, in sort of the short term, it's going to be mostly those sort of gimmicky sports games. So you can, you know, you can box and you can punch. They've got some dancing games uh, where you can dance. And the motion seems to be very one-to-one -one and quite true. So as you move your finger just one inch to the left or right, it's going to recognize that. And it's a very cool way to interact with your console. So. What Microsoft talked about, one of the things I really liked was imagine watching a DVD, although certainly not a Blu-ray on the Xbox, and you want to hit pause. You don't have to fumble with a controller or fumble with a remote anymore. Uh, you just say, Xbox, let it know you're talking to it, pause, and it pauses. You can actually move your finger around and scan and sort of go forward to where you want to be, uh, which is sort of a neat addition, but it's not going to sell a console for me. Uh, I think that we're not going to see the potential of Connect, previously Project Natal, for, for a good another year and a half as developers start using it. I think we're going to see sort of some Wii-esque party games for a while, and it's going to be, I think, a bit gimmicky. Uh, but until we see, you know, how Call of Duty or how Halo is going to work with, with the Kinect, you know, I'm not so sure it's going to really achieve that mainstream adoption. Uh, Microsoft did show off Halo Reach, they showed off the new Gears of War, and all of which were shown using traditional Xbox 360 consoles, uh, not Kinect, it was sort of a separate thing. Uh, so I'm not sure how it's going to work and how it's going to implement uh, moving forward. Certainly, you're going to look totally ridiculous. I mean, playing a game, imagine sitting in front of your console and you're sitting in front of your TV and you're sort of shooting things around. Imagine your neighbors are coming by and seeing you and doing a little dance. Uh, you're going to look totally insane. Um, but that may be one of those things that look crazy now and are going to seem completely mainstream in a few years in the next generation of consoles. Uh, but at least for, for the time being, uh, it seems very weird and very niche. And pricing is rumored to be $150. So it's a very expensive add-on to an already expensive console. So you're looking, if you want to get the new Xbox, the one with the bigger hard drive and the built-in wireless, you're looking at about 300 bucks. Another 150 on top of that, $450 gets you a console which is very powerful and can handle graphics and everything very impressively, uh, but it's not really that forward-looking now. It doesn't have the Blu-ray capabilities, but you are getting sort of a lot more in the package. I'm a big Xbox 360 fan. I have one. I love the console. Um, but I'm very curious to how Kinect is going to integrate sort of in that whole ecosystem. Uh, I will say that I've been extremely impressed with Xbox Live, and I think for me, that's what sells the console. So let's move off of Xbox now, and let's talk about Sony's new PlayStation Move, uh, which essentially looks like a Wii Motion Plus with a little bulb on the top. Uh, this is a traditional controller uh, motion sensing. So you've got a controller, you've got a little add-on, which is sort of like a nunchuck, and you can control your games that way. And this is very familiar to people who have seen it with the Wii you know, for, for years now. Uh, it's more exact uh, motion, so you get more true one-to-one, -one, and also can sort of act, work in a six-axis motion, so not just left and right, forward and back, and sort of can sense uh, all of your uh, proximity. Uh, this is sort of a more, more traditional approach and probably a bit more safe on Sony's part. I think Microsoft is taking a very big risk. Either Kinect is going to catch on and be the next big thing and define console gaming as we know it, or it's going to completely fizzle out. Uh, the Sony PlayStation Move uh, is more of a more of a sure thing. I think people are used to Wii. They've seen people hold a Wii remote, and they've seen people hold the nunchuck. I've got those backwards, and people are you know it's more familiar interface. Um, the gaming is exactly like you'd expect. There are peripherals where you can plug it in and use it as a gun. There'll be I'm sure lightsaber games and all kinds of stuff, or we can use the Motion Plus, and it's a much less expensive uh, proposition, coming in at just about thirty bucks for the Move controller although the little add-on is going to be a bit extra. So I, while on one hand, I think Microsoft is experimenting with a, perhaps a paradigm shift in how video games are consumed. On the other hand, I think Sony is going with a more uh, traditional consumer approach. And I think that's sort of reversed from what we saw when the consoles launched. 
I think when the PlayStation 3 launched, it was the first with, with a Blu-ray player, it had removable hard drives, you can install other operating systems on it. Um, it was a really true next generation console, and it was more than what people were looking for at the time. I think that's why its initial sales numbers were a bit low, and it was sort of as the console evolved, and sort of things that the PlayStation 3 had became more mainstream, sort of the adoption rate you know, went from very flat to going straight up. Uh, the Xbox, on, their, on the other hand, was a more traditional console. Uh, it used the DVD format people were used to. Developers already knew how to use it. Um, it was a little bit less expensive. You didn't get necessarily all the features that you, that you could get with the PlayStation 3, but it was what people were used to. And now we've sort of seen those things completely switch on their heads. Uh, so for my money, I'm certainly going to try Connect, although I'm very, very, very skeptical that maybe I'm buying a $150 uh, you know, remote-less access to my television, so I don't have to... Uh, fiddle with things if I want to watch a DVD. Um, PlayStation moves and again seems a bit more sure. You know how it's going to work. Even that are picking one up, you know how it's going to function. You know it's going to work well. It's going to be true one-to-one, -one, and you're going to be able to, you know, play a tennis game with it. Um, so, you know, that's my take on it. I'm curious to what you guys think. Do you agree or disagree? Am I way off? Do you think that Connect is going to be the next big thing? Are you willing to shell out the extra 150 bucks for it? You know, really just kind of interested to hear, um, you know, your guys' take on everything. Uh, anyway, I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. Leave your comments down below, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.